everyone, it's me, Jayma Radios, and today I've broken the leg again. What? This time you need more blood. Fast, let's prepare it. You need one liter of blood. So I need 55 centiliters of plasma. Plasma is a yellowish liquid composed of salts, enzymes, sugars, hormones, antibodies, and some proteins. Dissolve in water. Next, I add 45 centiliters of red blood cells that carry nutrients and oxygen to the blood. Then, I add 2 tablespoons of white blood cells that help the body and protect it. And lastly, I add 2 teaspoons of platelets that help the body to clot in case of injury. And here we have a good blood. But what has blood to do with fixing what's broken? Come with me. As soon as one of the bones breaks, the whole body springs into action to fix the injury. The blood vessels tear and hemorrhage to give a clotted blood or a hematoma. The severed blood vessels are sealed by the clotting process. Then the bone cells, deprived of nutrients, begin to die. Phagocytes, cells of the human system, cream away dead cells in any germ around the fracture. Then the hematoma is slowly absorbed. I know you are so curious and want to ask me if blood is the only responsible for everything. No. After the formation of new blood vessels, chondrocytes, and osteoblasts, bone cells, form a soft callus that bridges the ends of the bone. A callus is tougher than a clot, but not as strong as a bone. That's part of the reason you got a cast that holds the healing bone in place. And if it moved, then soft callus could break and begin again your recovery. Two weeks after the fracture, special cells called osteoclasts preserve this bone, while osteoblasts for new one, adding minerals to the mix to make the bone hard and strong as it bridges the broken pieces. The stage called the hard callus usually ends from 6 to 12 weeks after the break. Lastly, the bone is remodeled. Osteoclasts break down extra bone until it's completely healed and returned to its original shape. <laughs> I was just talking about the table leg. Like 